Hey everybody, Joe from Complete Carnivore, and we're cooking some more A5 Wagyu steaks. Um, I've done a video on how to cook them, and I'll put a link to that up in the corner there. You can see that. Um, these are different than the, the ones I did before. The ones I did before were from Pursuit Farms, and it was a few different uh, um, brands of, of Wagyu. These ones, this one, this is from Costco, and it's a Kagoshima, which is one of the main brands. Uh, this is from... Um, let me remember this one's from crowd cow and it's a Miyazaki and this one is from a place called the meadery And it is also a Kagoshima. So I want to taste the Kagoshima's and see how similar they are And see how different they are and I want to taste the Miyazaki and see how different it is from these other ones So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, just so you know this uh, They don't always have them at Costco. You got to kind of look uh, I spent like two or three months looking every time I went in for them and they finally had them hundred bucks a pound so these are all right about a pound each. That's a hundred dollar steak. This one here is I think about 170 and this one here I think is about 150 or so. So you're looking at uh, what $450, $400 worth of meat right here. So it's pretty nerve-wracking cooking it. Um, I'm not gonna lie. This is my second time cooking uh, Japanese A5 Wagyu. I've cooked plenty of other steaks, plenty of other types of steaks, but we're gonna cook these bad boys up. I got some pans, three different pans. We got a cast iron pan. I got two stainless steel skillets. I use another stainless steel, but I don't have one. So this is a Finex pan, and these both are made in. Um, they're all great pans. I love them. This one, it just looks cool because it's got a weird shape to it and a cool handle. I mean, this pan's hot, but I can grab the handle. Um, and I'll put links to these pans below. This one's about 325. We're looking 280 in that one. 270 in that we don't want the pan super hot because then the outside of the steak burns so what we're gonna do let's get some kosher salt on these this is jacobson kosher salt you can use diamond crystal or morton's whatever you got i just wanted to use the fancy stuff for for these steaks so you can give them a decent amount of salt this is about the only other seasoning they're going to get i don't want to use pepper i don't want to use any garlic or thyme or rosemary or things you see other people use on steaks because I just want the flavor of the steak to come through. So pretty decent amount of salt on these. These go into the pan. I'm, put, I'm putting these two on a bit sooner than this one because this one's a lot thinner. You can see that one's fairly thin. Those are a bit thicker. So we want to give these ones a little bit of a head start and we'll see if I can keep them straight. So what, again, this one is Costco. We'll put that back here. You want a good sizzle, but you don't want it like crazy. This one's from Crowd Cow. And that one will go in that pan. And we'll save this one for a little bit. Um, for years, you heard a lot of people say, only flip your steak once, only flip your steak once. I don't hold to that at all. I flip it multiple times as I'm cooking. Uh, it gives you a better idea of what's going on in the sear, helps you control the temperature and the inside better. Um, by the way, pull your smoke alarms, pull the batteries out, because this gets smoky, as you can see. I'm already gonna flip it. You can see we're already getting some color on this and that's kind of what we want we'll flip this i don't know maybe 10 15 times um i'm gonna turn this one down a bit the pans are about medium high heat so again they're not blazing uh they're not blazing hot but they're hot enough to cook all right let's get this one going too oh we need to salt the uh the other side of the steaks i only salted the one side Hard to keep everything, keep track of everything. Give it another just sprinkle of salt. There's gonna be some popping, like I said, there's gonna be smoke. So your smoke alarms, if you haven't pulled the batteries out or anything, they're gonna go off. I've had that happen a number of times. So we wanna just keep flipping these until you're done. You can see how much fat's rendering out of this. This is kind of what we're looking for. We want a nice, crusty crusty outside on it internal temperature i want to be about 130 on these um this is the uh, thermal works one a fairly new thermometer that they put out so see, we're only 60 degrees inside so we got a few more flips before we get uh ready to go on that and these obviously are nowhere near done so we got a few more flips this one's rendering out a lot more fat than this one that's that's interesting to see I don't know if it's because of the type of pan, because of the heat of the pan, or what. But we just want to keep flipping these. 
This one I think is going to cook fairly quick. Um, but again, you want to go to about 130 uh, cooking temperature on these. I think I might pour some of this fat out so we get, I don't know, we'll leave it. Uh, some people like going to what 150, 160 on Wagyu. I don't have the guts to do that. Uh, I don't want to risk ruining it. I have a couple more in the freezer that I, I eventually might try something like that on. Let's get a temperature of this one because that crust is looking beautiful. Um, let's see. Still got a ways to go. One thing I like about this thermometer is it reads super quick and just the tip uh, is all you need in there. You don't need to stick it in very far. So it's good for somewhat thin pieces of meat like these because it still takes an accurate temperature where most thermometers, you need to stick them in a lot further. So yeah, this one's, oh, we're looking at one, just about 100 on that one. Again, we're going about 130 on these. We'll just keep flipping them until they're done. I think I might need to give that one a little more heat. All right, you don't need to sit here and watch me flipping, so we'll take a break for a minute, and I'll come back and show you when these are done. All right, we're back. We got these two off. These ones are done. Let's give them a quick temperature check. That one went a little bit higher than I wanted it to. It'll still be good. This one is really thin, so it cooked quick. Uh, this one is almost done. I think we'll pull it. We'll try some different donenesses on some of these steaks too. Again, just keep flipping it till it's done. You want a nice crusty outside and definitely use a thermometer so you know what's going on inside. Um, yeah, let's pull this one and call it done. We're gonna let these rest for just a minute and then we'll slice them up. We'll give them a taste and we'll tell you what I think of the different, the Miyazaki, the uh, Kagoshima, the difference between Crowd Cow and the Meadery and Costco, uh, and see what uh, what differences we have here. So uh, we'll take a break for a minute and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Everything's cooked up. Been resting for a few minutes, took a few pictures. Uh, let's get into these. Let's try the two Kagoshimas first. This one again is the one from Costco. Again, just cuts like butter. Um, maybe a little more done than I wanted to. Let's try this. Mmm, wow. It just melts in your mouth. You take a bite and the fat just kind of explodes everywhere. And you taste it. It's not a huge beefy flavor in this. It's pretty mild flavor. Um, but the texture on it is wonderful. Uh, again, you just feel the fat coating in your mouth as you take a bite. All right, let's give this one a try. This one might be a little more done since it was so thin, but I'm okay with that. Mmm. Again, very, very similar. I can't really tell much of a difference be be between the two. Uh, I'll probably need to taste some more and see. But, mm, it's so good. It's unlike any other steak you'll eat. It's not like a ribeye or a porterhouse you get at the uh, grocery store. It's so, just explodes in your mouth with flavor. Um, I think this one from the meadery, it's a little more beefy flavor, a little, little stronger beef flavor than this one. This one's more mild. At least that, that's kind of what I'm getting after just a couple bites. So let me take one more and we'll see. Yeah, I think I like this one better than the Costco one. Um, Miyazaki and Kagoshima are kind of the two, if, I mean, if there is such a thing as a commodity brand of Wagyu, it's these two. Uh, they're the ones you're gonna see most most often here in the US. Um, there's other brands. Uh, Kobe is probably the most famous brand. There's Hokkaido Snow Beef, there's Sendai, there's Omi, there's uh, Iwate, there's Olive Fed Beef. There's a whole bunch of different types of um, Japanese A5 Wagyu and they all taste different. They all have different flavor profiles, different fat characteristics. Um, they, they also have different marbling scores. So let's try the uh, Miyazaki. At first bite, this one tastes more like a regular steak than these two. There's still an amazing mouthfeel. Um, it's not quite as tender as these other ones. 
but still wonderful. It's a delicious steak. Um, again, it tastes more like a regular steak. There's there's a stronger, beefier flavor. It doesn't quite have the same. I don't even know how to describe it. Delicate fat of these ones, um, but. All of them are delicious. You can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, I mean, they're, they're all going to be a, a, an amazing experience when you eat them. Um, again, they're 100, 150 bucks a steak, so you're probably not eating these every week. Um, but once a year, if you get a big promotion at work, if you want to do a special holiday dinner, these are all great. I'll put links down to these two. Uh, just check your Costco and see if they have those. But uh, Crowd Cow and the Meadery, they're both great. Um, I like them both. I would eat them both again. I'm happy with, I, I, I'm not disappointed with any of them. So give them a shot. Again, I, the Miyazaki tastes a little more beefy. Uh, and this was the one from Crowd Cow. The one from the Meadery, uh, it's, it's a little more tender, a little more delicate flavor. But I think I like the mouthfeel of, of these ones better. Again, you could have a different experience when you buy steaks. There's other tons of other different brands you can buy and try. But these are the ones I have here. So let me know if you like this video. Let me know what you think. Please subscribe, share it with your friends. Leave any comments. If you have any questions about any of this meat, if you want to tell me I cooked it horribly and did it wrong, uh, I get a lot of those comments too. Um, and I have a couple more pieces of uh, A5 Wagyu and even an A4. Uh, just a quick little side note on, on, on uh, grading of Japanese beef. There's A, B, and C. A is the best. Uh, and then there's... One, two, three, four, five. Um, I believe the A, B, and C is the yield of the cow, and one, two, three, four, five is the quality. Or the, uh, some people prefer A4 to A5. It, it, again, it's more like a real American steak. Um, and then there's beef marbling score. This one, I believe, which one? This one was a BMS nine, and it goes all the way up to twelve. So there's some that are even more marbled than than these. These are probably all right about nine maybe 10, maybe eight, uh, somewhere in that range. But they're all delicious, they're all wonderful. Buy them, try them, give yourself a once in a lifetime or maybe once a year experience. So thanks for watching again. Again, let me know if you have any questions or comments.